Throughout Chapter 7, we've had the opportunity to review rules of differentiation and integration and apply those two processes to new functions, such as natural logarithmic functions and inverse trigonometric functions. In Section 7.6, we will review limits and also learn a new rule called L'Hopital's Rule. From Calculus 1, one technique that you learned to evaluate the limit of a basic function is direct substitution. For example, let's suppose I want to find the limit as x approaches 2 of the function 2x. Well, you've learned if you can plug that target value in and obtain a real number, then you have calculated the limit. That simply means that the function value and the limit are the same. In this section, we're going to learn what to do if, after direct substitution, we obtain something called an indeterminate form, which basically looks like 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And by the way, those two expressions are similar and related. Then we're going to calculate the limit in a special way. And this process will involve derivatives. So to calculate the limit as x approaches c of f of x divided by g of x, if I plug in my target value c and I obtain one of those indeterminate forms, then I can calculate the limit by taking the ratio of the derivative. So notice I've got f prime in the top and I have g prime in the bottom. Please note this is not the quotient rule. My purpose here is not to find the derivative of this function. My purpose is to calculate the limit. I'm using the derivative of the top and the bottom to calculate the limit. So let's try an example. Example 1, evaluate the following limits exactly. The limit as x approaches infinity of x divided by e to the x plus 1. Now, notice in this case our target value is infinity. That's a symbol representing the idea of a number that grows and increases without bounds. It's not a specific number that we can actually plug in. However, we can imagine that as x goes to infinity, the numerator is going to go to infinity. And as x goes to infinity, e to the x also goes to infinity. So we do have an indeterminate form infinity over infinity. That's the green light for L'Hopital's rule. I know it looks like it reads La Hospital's rule, but we pronounce it L'Hopital's rule. Once I discover that indeterminate form, then I can individually find the derivative of the top and the bottom to calculate the limit. So we're going to find the limit as x approaches infinity. I'm going to take the derivative of the top, which is 1, and the derivative of the bottom, which is just e to the x. Now before we proceed, I have a couple of things that I want to point out. First of all, this guy is what we call the limit operator. I'm going to carry that through my work until I actually evaluate the limit. It's a pending operation. It's telling me go find the limit of the function that follows. Other operators that you know are the differential operator, d over dx, and the integral sign is also an operator. All of those represent pending operations. As soon as I execute that operation, that's the point in my work when I want to drop that limit sign. So until I absolutely execute that limit, I'm going to carry that operator through my work. The second thing I want to point out here is that the purpose of this problem is to find a limit at infinity. My purpose is not to find a derivative. So if I wanted to find the derivative of this function, I would have to apply the quotient rule. But I'm not trying to find the limit, the derivative of this function. I'm trying to find the limit of this function. So I'm applying L'Hopital's rule, which says when I obtain this indeterminate form from direct substitution, then I can individually and separately differentiate the numerator and denominator and then recalculate the limit to obtain the correct value. So let's get back to calculating this limit. Now, as x goes to infinity, we know that our denominator e to the x is also approaching infinity. Just a quick sketch to help you understand why that is so. Think about the graph of your exponential function. e to the x does something like this, right? So as x approaches infinity, 
our function e to the x is approaching positive infinity. So now we have this form, one on the top, infinity on the bottom. If the denominator of a fraction explodes without bounds, that brings the value of the fraction down to zero. Thus, the limit of this function is zero. So L'Hopital's rule allowed us to overcome this initial indeterminate form, and by calculating the derivative of the numerator and denominator separately and reevaluating the limit, we were able to obtain the value of the limit. Now, if you want to glance over your calculator, graph the original function, and then notice as x goes to infinity, if you look at the far right side of your graph, you're going to see the function level out at zero. It should level out right near the x-axis. And that's just a visual way to check the value of your limit. Let's try the next one. The limit as x approaches 1, notice this is not a limit at infinity, it's an ordinary target value of 1. So the limit as x approaches 1 of arctangent of x minus pi over 4 divided by x minus 1. Now let's see what happens when we directly substitute 1 in for x. We would have arctangent of 1 minus pi over 4. Well, if we think about the unit circle, tangent is equal to 1 at pi over 4. So what we have in the numerator is essentially pi over 4 minus pi over 4, so the numerator is approaching 0. If we plug 1 in for x in the denominator, we've got 1 over 1, which is 0. So we have another indeterminate form, 0 over 0. We can't evaluate that at this point. We have to apply L'Hopital's rule in order to get the value of that limit. So to calculate the limit, as x approaches 1 of arc tangent of x minus pi over 4, divided by x minus 1. We're going to apply L'Hopital's rule. Notice I haven't calculated the limit yet, so I'm going to carry my limit operator on this step. Now I'm going to individually differentiate the numerator and the denominator. Now here's a pop quiz for you. What is the derivative of arctangent of x? Do you have that memorized yet? Hopefully you're going to come up with 1 over 1 plus x squared. So the derivative of arctangent of x, that's a derivative formula we learned previously, is 1 over 1 plus x squared. The derivative of negative pi over 4, of course, is 0. Now, distinctly and separately, we're going to differentiate the denominator. The derivative of x minus 1 is 1. So if we simplify this, we have the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 over 1 plus x squared. Now, since we can plug our target target value in for x and obtain a real number, we can also calculate the limit at this time. It looks like we have 1 over 2 or 1 half. Now observe the work on this step. I dropped the limit operator because I'm actually executing that limit. So the value of this limit is 1 half. So if I graph this original function on my calculator and I see what do the y values do as the x values get close to 1, we will see the y values approaching 1 half. So L'Hopital's rule is a tool for calculating some stubborn limits, those that you can't evaluate by direct substitution, by factoring, by rationalizing the denominator, or any of those other basic techniques you learned in Calc 1 in order to evaluate limits. Let's try another limit at infinity. The limit as x approaches infinity of x times tangent of 1 over x. Now, it, as x approaches infinity, this little factor is approaching infinity. Let's look at what happens to 1 over x. As x approaches infinity, the denominator is increasing without bounds, the value of the fraction is going to 0. So the argument 1 over x is approaching 0, but that argument is inside of a tangent function. So as that argument approaches 0, the value of this factor is approaching tangent of 0. And we know from the unit circle tangent of 0 is y divided by x, 0 divided by 1, or 0. So the form that we have here is another indeterminate form, infinity times 0. Now your first response might be, oh, that's easy. The limit is 0. 
Well, sometimes it'll turn out to be zero. Sometimes it won't. Remember, we're not talking about specific values. We're talking about limits. So tangent of 1 over x is approaching zero. It's not necessarily obtaining the value of zero, while this factor is exploding without bounds. So we are going to have to do a little bit more work to determine if this limit is zero or not. However, we cannot apply L'Hopital's rule because remember, L'Hopital's rule only applies if we have the indeterminate forms infinity over infinity or zero over zero. So what we're going to do is manipulate this expression so that it's equivalent to the one that's presented, but it also exhibits that indeterminate form. So the trick on this one is to find the limit as x approaches infinity. Now, I'm going to leave tangent of 1 over x right where it is. And then I'm going to take the x coefficient into the denominator as 1 over x. So notice what I've done. I've taken the x into the denominator and I have inverted it. So I have a double inversion here. So let's just for a minute to understand this, look at that factor alone x is equal to 1 over 1 over x. That's essentially what I've done. Notice that if I multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by x, I would end up with x. So these two expressions are equivalent. So x is equal to 1 over 1 over x, and that's essentially what I did with the x in this spot. I inverted it and put it in the denominator. If you apply two inverse functions, then it's going to be equivalent to the original. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, we've already established the fact that the form of tangent of 1 over x as x approaches infinity is 0. And now notice the limit as x approaches infinity of the denominator, 1 over x, is also 0. So I have obtained that indeterminate form, which gives me the green light to apply L'Hopital's rule. So to find this limit as x approaches infinity, we're going to find the derivative of the top separately and the derivative of the denominator separately. Now we're working with ordinary tangent here, so the derivative of tangent is secant squared of the argument times the argument's derivative, which in this case would be negative 1 over x squared. Now separately, apart from that numerator, we're going to differentiate the denominator. I keep stressing that because we're not applying the quotient rule here. The derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. Now if you miss something there, I'm thinking of 1 over x as x to the negative 1, and then the derivative of x to the negative 1 would be negative 1 x to the negative 2. Rewrite that as a fraction, you get negative 1 over x squared. Now let's go back and simplify and then evaluate our limit. Notice you have a negative 1 over x squared in both the top and the bottom, and we need to evaluate secant squared of 1 over x. Now we've already discussed that as x approaches infinity, the argument 1 over x approaches 0. So to evaluate this limit, we're going to examine what happens to secant as the argument approaches 0. Now it might be easier to think about secant in terms of cosine because they're reciprocal functions. What happens to cosine as x approaches 0? Now let me be clear here. What happens to cosine as the argument approaches 0 or the angle approaches 0? Cosine of 0 is equal to 1. We can see that from our unit circle value. So when the angle or the argument is 0, cosine the x value here is 1. So secant is also 1, right? Because secant is 1 over cosine. So essentially we have secant squared of 0, which gives us 1. Now go back to the beginning of the problem. The indeterminate form that we began with was infinity times 0. Notice we did not get 0 for the limit, we got 1 for the limit. So be really careful about manipulating things that are increasing without bounds or are approaching 0. Do not treat them as if they are equal to 0, because in this case we ended up with infinity times 0 ultimately giving us a limit of 1. 
So when you use L'Hopital's rule, you must have either infinity over infinity or zero over zero. If not, if you get something like this, you can manipulate it algebraically until you have that green light in determinate form. Then apply L'Hopital's rule, you'll be able to execute that limit. Now, how does this relate to some of the newer skills that we've been learning? Let's talk about exponential indeterminate forms. If after direct substitution, the limit takes the form one to the infinity, zero to the zero, or zero infinity to the zero, manipulate the expression with logarithms and then apply L'Hopital's rule. You might be surprised how some of these turn out. If you're evaluating the limit that gives you the indeterminate form, one to the infinity, you might think, well, that's going to be one because one to any power is always equal to one. But remember, limits are different animals. It's not always equal to one. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And what do you do with zero to the zero power? Zero to any power is zero. However, anything raised to the zeroth power is equal to one. So you have to go through the analysis eventually getting the indeterminate forms infinity over infinity or zero over zero and apply L'Hopital's rule to figure out that value. If you get infinity to the zero, you might want to conclude that that's equal to one because anything to the zeroth power is equal to one. It's a possibility, but it's not a guarantee. So you have to go through the steps to manipulate the expression. And this time we're gonna use logarithms. So this might remind you a little bit of logarithmic differentiation. Here's what I mean by that. We're gonna find the limit as x approaches zero from the right of e to the x plus x raised to the two over x. Now, if I plug in zero directly, plugging it in for x, e to the zeroth is one. If we plug a zero in right here, we'd end up with a base of one. If we plug in a zero right here, two divided by a number, which is decreasing down to zero, basically means your fraction is exploding without bounds. So we have the form one to infinity. That is not a green light for L'Hopital's rule. It just simply means that I have an exponential indeterminate form. So when we have an exponential indeterminate form, we're gonna make use of logarithms to simplify. Now I can't just introduce a logarithm to this limit because I need it unless I can cancel it out. I need to be able to apply the inverse function as well. So what I'm going to do is introduce a left side to this equation. I'm gonna say let the limit L equal the limit as x approaches zero from the right of e to the x plus x raised to the two over x. That left side allows me to introduce a natural log. At this point, we're gonna take the natural log of both sides. So we're gonna take natural log of the left side, and this will be equal to natural log of the limit on the right. Now notice here we have the combination of a natural log or an outer function and a limit applied to the argument of the function. We're going to call on a rule from calculus one that you may or may not remember. When you're taking the limit of a function, actually, let me do it in a different order. When you have the function of the limit as x approaches c of an inner function, then really the limit operator and your outer function are interchangeable. So from calculus one, you learn that this limit can move to the outside and then you can deal with your composition function like so. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Since we have an outside function and a limit applied to the argument of that function, those two are interchangeable. So we can rewrite this natural log of L equals limit as x approaches zero from the right of the natural log of e to the x plus x raised to the two over x. Now the presence of this logarithm, which by the way we have on both sides, which means I could eventually go back and cancel it out, right? So I haven't introduced anything that wasn't there before that's not equivalent to the previous line. Now that we have the presence of that logarithm, just like we did with logarithmic differentiation, we can now break up the argument from its exponent. 
So using properties of logarithms, we can take this exponent down in front as the coefficient of the natural log. So left side's going to hang out for a bit, natural log of L. We have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 2 over x times natural log of e to the x plus x. So just like logarithmic differentiation allowed me to separate an exponent from the argument, it's going to do that same thing here, which means I can get out of the exponential indeterminate form into possibly 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So let's see what we're dealing with here. As x approaches 0 from the right, as we saw earlier, e to the 0th plus 0 is approaching the value of 1. And so natural log of this is going to approach natural log of 1, which is 0. So this function here is approaching 0. Now, I have this function 2 over x. If I look at it in this form, 2 divided by x approaching 0 is going to give me infinity. Now, this one's going to be very easy to manipulate. It's not going to be quite such calisthenics like we did on the, the previous example. What I'm going to do is just rewrite it in a different form. I'm really just changing my perspective of this function. So first of all, I'm going to take this constant 2 in front of the limit operator, just like you can do in front of a derivative or an integral. And I'm going to multiply 1 over x times this natural log function. So I have natural log of e to the x plus x over x. Now I didn't do any new operations. I just wrote it differently. And by writing it differently, it changes the way I think about it. If I look at the numerator, we know the numerator is approaching 0 as x approaches 0 from the right. And now we know the denominator x is approaching 0 as x approaches 0. So there is our indeterminate form 0 over 0, which gives me the green light for applying L'Hopital's rule. So applying L'Hopital's rule, that is finding the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom individually, we have 2 times the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. Now, I'm differentiating the numerator. The numerator is a natural log function, so I'm going to take the argument of that natural log and put it in the denominator, and the derivative of that argument in the numerator. Okay, so that's the derivative of the numerator. Now, I'm going to make my main fraction bar a little longer so I can see what's the numerator and what's the denominator. Um, so that main fraction bar matches this fraction bar. Now, looking at just the denominator, which is x, the derivative of x is 1. So we need to calculate natural log of L, 2 times the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of e to the x plus 1 divided by e to the x plus x. Now, notice at this point, after simplifying, we can now evaluate this limit by direct substitution. Specifically, keep your eye on that denominator. If we plug 0 in for x, the denominator is non-zero, so that's a perfectly legal operation. So we have natural log of L equals 2 times. Now, I'm ready to evaluate this, so I'm dropping the limit operator, e to the 0 plus 1 over e to the 0 plus 0. So natural log of the limit that we're trying to find. Uh, on the top here, we have 2 times e to the 0 is 1 plus 1 is 2. And in the denominator, we have 1 plus uh, 0, which is 1. So natural log of L equals 4. Now, we're almost there. We have natural log of the limit, which we were originally trying to calculate. So if I come back up here, remember we set our limit equal to L. I really need to solve for L to answer the question. And we can do that simply by converting to exponential form. So L is equal to e to the fourth. Therefore, these three little dots mean therefore, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of e to the x plus x raised to the 2 over x is equal to e to the fourth power. So we started with an exponential indeterminate form. We set our limit equal to a placeholder called L. We took the natural log of both sides. Since we had an equation with two sides, we were able to do that. We moved the exponent. We discovered the indeterminate form 0 over 0. We applied L'Hopital's rule, and then we're able to calculate the limit by direct substitution. Now, you may be sitting there wondering, wait a second, it was a limit from the right. 
Well, if we think about the function e to the x as it passes through its y-intercept at 0, 1, the function is continuous through x equals 0, so the limit from the left and the limit from the right are the same. So in this case, the only thing that it would affect would be this exponent right here. We would know that if x is approaching 0 from the right, that has the form infinity as opposed to negative infinity. Okay, that was pretty involved. We should probably practice another one of those. So let's do example B. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x to the 2x. Notice in this case, again, we have a variable base and a variable exponent, as we did in example A. That was the opportunity we used to apply logarithmic differentiation. So you can imagine uh, applying the logarithm to both sides of an equation here will also be helpful. So let's discover the form. The base is approaching 0, the exponent is approaching 0, so we have an exponential indeterminate form. So that means we need to invent a placeholder over here. I'm going to say let L equal this limit, and that placeholder on the left side is what makes it legal to apply the natural log to both sides. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have natural log of L on the left. and natural log of our limit over here on the right. And as we saw before, we can switch the outside function and that limit operator. So we have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of natural log of x to the 2x. Applying properties of logarithms, we can move that exponent on the argument down in front of the the uh, log function, so we have 2x natural log of x. Now keep in mind, since this has an x and the limit is dependent on x, I cannot move that exponent further than this boundary line. So I wouldn't want the 2x in front of the limit operator. It has to stay within that limit operator in case you were tempted to move it too far. Okay, next let's look at our form. And we're going to figure out our form by direct substitution. So looking at this factor first, if we plug 0 in for x, we're going to get 0. So our form is 0 times a natural log of an argument approaching 0 is going to be negative infinity. Now if you're wondering where that came from, let's just quickly visualize the graph of natural log of x. Basic natural log of x looks something like this. And if you'll remember, there's a vertical asymptote there on the y-axis. At this point, you can see why it's necessary to have the limit from the right. As x approaches 0 from the right, the value of the function approaches negative infinity. So that's where this negative infinity came from. Because the domain of natural log is only 0 to infinity, it is important to have a one-sided limit because there is no function that exists less than 0 or approaching 0 from the left. So we need to manipulate this so that it matches one of the indeterminate forms, 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And we can apply the same trick that we did on a previous problem. Now, first of all, I'm going to move this coefficient of 2 in front of the lim limit operator. It's not dependent on x, so it can move out. I'm going to leave the natural log of x where it is, and then I'm going to take this factor x and invert it twice. That means I'm going to put it in the denominator, and then I'm going to reciprocate it in the denominator. Now we will have the form negative infinity on top, and notice on the bottom as x approaches 0 from the right, if the denominator is shrinking to 0, the value of the fraction is increasing without bounds. So we have the form infinity over infinity. And the negative is just a constant, so as long as I've got the infinities there, that's the green light for L'Hopital's rule. So now we can individually find the limit uh, or the derivative of the top and the bottom according to L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of natural log of x on the top is 1 over x, and the derivative of 1 over x in the bottom is negative 1 over x squared. Now to simplify this algebraically, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by x squared. So everything down here is going to cancel, and here we're going to be left with x to the power of 1. So we have natural log of L 
equals 2 times the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. And don't forget about that negative in the denominator. We're looking at the function negative x. Well, that's pretty easy. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right of negative x is 0. Now we have the natural log of the limit that we're trying to calculate. So the last thing we need to do is convert to exponential form. So L equals e to the zeroth, or L equals 1. Thus, let's come back up here and make our observation. Remember, we started out with the form 0 to the 0. Limit x approaching 0 from the right of x to the 2x turned out to be 1 in this case. Sometimes this form 0 over 0 will lead you to 0. In this case, it led us to 1. So the bottom line, what do you need to know from this particular video? Number one, if you obtain the indeterminate form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, then you can apply L'Hopital's rule when calculating limits. That is, you can individually differentiate the numerator and the denominator and then recalculate your limit to obtain the correct value. Second, if you get an exponential indeterminate form, then set your limit equal to some placeholder like L, take the natural log of both sides, and then manipulate it until you can obtain that form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity so that you can apply L'Hopital's rule. All right, that completes this video.